Let's look at Wednesday. There are 12 games on. It's a busy day. Can you stream? Well, look at your roster, but we'll take a look at what happens on Wednesday and then coming up the schedule, how we plan it out. And of course, we listen to Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lynn. I actually choreographed Tom Holland's umbrella lip sync dance routine. I'm also the lead fantasy analyst at basketballmonster.com and you can find me on Twitter as always at redrock underscore b-ball on TikTok at redrock underscore b-ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free. We're available on all platforms. So double bang. Download the audio, watch the video, watch the video, download the audio, thumb it up, leave your comments, all of that stuff. We're talking Wednesday, 12 games on. A lot of them, that's a lot of games. We're going to talk about all of those. We're going to look at, you know, somebody else, some of you, there'll be 10% of you, rough back of the envelope. Do you say envelope or envelope? Envelope. Back of the envelope math, 10% of you might have a streaming spot available. You might have an open spot. The rest of you become bro, I'm full. But... If you like got hit with injuries, you stuck them into your ILs and then something opens up, well, we take a look at it. We see who's available. We see where the value is. We see what is going on nonsense-wise regarding injury reports. So let's talk about the game's first one. Cleveland, Charlotte. Swear to God, we just saw this game on Monday, but this one is in Charlotte. These two teams have the same schedule rest of week, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. High volume, high volume, high volume. Sunday's a 10-gamer. That is borderline high. I still think that for the majority of you, you'll be pretty full, but that's borderline. And then next week, we get a little bit of a respite because the first five days of next week are lower volume days. No, not first four. First four, sorry. First four. Monday through Thursday are lower volume days. Friday's a high volume day and Sunday is a high volume day next week, week 23. So the Cavs go Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday. So they go three quality games to start the week, and then they play Sunday. Whereas the Hornets play Monday, Wednesday on the uh, quality game days, and then have Friday, Sunday on the lower days. Oh, sorry, the higher volume days. Don Mitchell's out. Dean Wade's out. I thought that uh, the report yesterday saying that you know we hope to get them back for the end of the season for Max Struess would mean that he was out. But no, 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 he's questionable. So maybe he does return. And then for the Hornets, the same blokes are out. Mark Williams, Lamelo Ball. Seth Curry and Cody Martin at this point. I'm not even going to bother listing them, I don't think, anymore. I just think they're done. I don't know what we're waiting for. We still do have three weeks to go, but like, come on. Like, what is going on? Uh, For the Cavs, the Koala, Evan Mobley, we have seen him return from the injury. We haven't seen full minutes load from him yet. He's been pretty good in those games, but let's see a big one. Let's see him put up the big minutes, and let's see how that looks and how that impacts guys like George Niang. For the Hornets, Alexei Pokashevsky played more minutes than Davis Bertans last game. Is that the trend? 26 of Poku is close enough to being a 12-team league guy. Now, you wouldn't use him Wednesday, Friday, Sunday almost definitely, but Monday, Wednesday to start next week, that starts to become interesting. So we watch to see the role and how it evolves. Karis LeVert continues to get the boost with Don out. Now, he has been dreadful. And this is Karis LeVert. We know what he does. He will be brutal on percentages at times, and he'll have these stretches where he looks like the best player in the world. And you've got to be able to live with that. On the Hornets side, Trey Mann got more minutes than Vasily and Misic last game. Let's see whether that continues. But irrespective of whether he's more than Misic or less, Mann is getting that boost on this Hornets team considering who is out. The second game, we're looking at the Brooklyn Nets and the Washington Wizards. The Nets go Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. Next week, they have Monday, Wednesday, Saturday. So three quality games next week and then a Sunday as well. Whereas the Wizards play the, the standard Wednesday, Friday, Sunday this week. And then they have Tuesday, Wednesday to begin next week, uh, and then Friday, Sunday as higher volume days. Cam Johnson's out. Cam Thomas is questionable. So the small cam the small cam is in. The taller cam is out. Dennis Smith is out. That's the backup Dennis point guard. They've got two cams and two Dennises. Wow, okay. Cater Bates-Diop is also out. Now, I didn't have the Wizards report when I did this, but I do now. Tyus Jones is out. Landry Shamit is out. Kyle Kuzma and Denny Avdia are both off the injury report. But guess what? In the last week, both Kuzma and Avdia have missed games where they haven't been on the injury report. So I'm going to say that we're putting them with a questionable tag. I wouldn't be shocked if we just get a random Jordan Poole absence as well. But 
them not being on the injury report does not mean that I don't think they're questionable. That's Kuzma and Avdia. Jones is out, and we, we he is a he's a jack, I reckon. Get that garbage out of here, Tyus Jones, because like this is just a back issue. He's a free agent. I don't think he's coming back. He's preserving his health for next season, I would guess. I don't think he's returning, but I don't know. Noah Clowney has been getting some minutes for the Nets. I like Clowney as a young draft prospect. I like him. The little flashes we've seen now, I think he can develop into a useful fantasy guy in the future. But let's see, does he play those minutes over Dayron Sharp? Because that becomes important if Claxon does miss time down the stretch. So we're just watching uh, Clowney here. And then for the Wizards, we finally got a good one out of Corey Kispert. But can he do it if Avdia and Kuzma actually play? He will start with Bilal out. We know that. But like, what does he do? Now, what, what we also know is that um, 20,000 Lee's legend, Jules Bernard, and uh, Bubbles 2, Justin Champagne, have been sent to the G League. So that would give you a decent indication that Kuzma and Avdia do play because those guys, especially Champagne, He's got some uh, game restrictions in terms of how much he can play. So just watch that one too. But Kispert is going to get the role. We just hope that the shots go in. Dennis Schroeder continues to get a boost. It'll be more so of a boost if Cam Thomas is out. But with Dennis Smith out, he's going to have to play a lot of point guard because there is nobody else. And then Jared Butler gets the boost. Tyus is out. Jordan Poole, I don't know. But Butler, honestly, he is as fringy as it gets in terms of... Do I add this guy now? Because I am convinced Jared Butler will be a 12-team league guy at some point this season. And I wouldn't be shocked if we hit that Tuesday, Wednesday back-to-back next week where Jones is out and maybe pulls out and Butler's getting 30 and he's a top 95 player. But I don't know that and it's very risky to do that now and maybe get nothing out of him for the week. But we are watching him and he is getting a significant boost because of the back issue from Tyus Jones. The Warriors and the Magic is the next game. <laughs> The Warriors go Wednesday, Friday, Sunday this week, and then next week they start with a Tuesday, Thursday quality game stretch, and then they play Friday, Sunday. The Magic have Wednesday, Friday, and then Saturday this week. This is their first game for the week, the Magic, but at least they have one more quality game to go. Next week, they lead into the week with Monday, Wednesday. So that's a nice little stretch for Magic. Saturday, Monday, Wednesday, three qualities in five nights starting Saturday. Then they have Friday, Sunday as well. Trace Jackson Davis is out for Tuesday's game, of course he is. Why wouldn't you want him to play on a low-volume day where we could use him for fantasy? It's frustrating, but I get it, right? He's got, an, he's got knee soreness. It's a back-to-back. They desperately need him to play because they're bad and they need to win. So we'll see what happens. I would expect that it is just a preload on a back-to-back and that uh, Trace will play on Wednesday, but I don't know. So I'm going to list him questionable for now. Both Gaz Harris and Caleb Houston are questionable. If they're both out, it does really boost Cole Anthony and maybe Mr. Black. But we're not really that interested in using Anthony Black in fantasy leagues. The Warriors on a back-to-back, like I said, and the Magic. We talked about this on the Fantasy Trend Show earlier. Paolo Banquero, everything's going in. At some point, it won't, and it will be pretty nasty. So let's see what he's able to do. I love his boosted assists. I'm a little worried about the shooting. In terms of getting boosted, well, the Warriors outside of Jackson Davis are healthy, but the guy they've been boosting up is Jackson Davis. So if he plays, he gets the boost and he's usable. And then John Isaac's getting like 23 a night. Now, will John Isaac be good? I don't know. They've got a back-to-back Friday, Saturday. Will John Isaac play both those games? He has played back-to-backs this season. There's no guarantee that he sits. There's no guarantee that he plays. He's doing some good stuff at the moment, which again, I just do not believe that we are having that discussion about John Isaac being good in fantasy this year after all those injuries, but he is. And the minutes are there, and I don't mind using him. Today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. That's what brings home your winning fantasy basketball trophy. It's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything that you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether it's speed, power, or style that you're into, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because... With eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts that you need at the prices you want, it is easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to US customers. Okay, we are going to move along to the next one because we've got 12 of them to talk about here. The next one, next one is the New York Knicks, the Toronto Raptors. Got some injury updates for some of these guys. 
The Knicks go Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, as basically every single team does. Next week, they lead in with two qualities on Tuesday, Thursday, and they have Friday, Sunday. The Raptors, only two more games this week. Bad schedule. And they're on high-volume days. Obviously, Sunday, only 10. You can debate whether that's high or not. But they play Wednesday, and they play Sunday. Next week, they go Tuesday, Wednesday with a back-to-back, and then Friday, Sunday as well. Ananobi is out. Randall is out. Robinson is out. Alec Burks is questionable. Barrett is out, quickly is out. Obviously, Jonte Porter is out. Uh, he won't be coming back this season. And DJ Carton is out. But Barrett and quickly look like they could be back for that game on Sunday. But are you able to hold If you've got open IL slots, it's not a bad move to add them. I think they'll play on Sunday. And then you lead into a Tuesday, Wednesday, back-to-back combo where, again, I bet they're in a weird spot where I don't think they actually end up lasting for the end of the, end of the year. But there is an opportunity here for these guys to return. They're back and practicing and ready to go. Isaiah Hartenstein was on the um, trend show earlier today because he's shooting like 78% from the field. He steals and blocks it through the roof. He's only still getting 25, 26 minutes, but his per minute production has flipped. It's great. Let's see what he does again. Well, for the Raptors, Oshay Abaji, if you're looking for someone to get you one steal, one block, and one three, a triple one, he does it. And with everyone still out, he's going to get minutes. He'll play 31 or 32. He might have 12 points with five rebounds, two assists, a three, a steal, a block. That might be useful enough for you. You probably not, don't want to start it in most situations, but we see what he's able to do. In terms of guys getting boosted, 48-minute legend Juice McBride, they're just going to play him every minute in the world. Thibodeau's a maniac, obviously, so he'll just keep playing and generating big numbers. And the one I want to watch who does get boosted is Kobe Simmons. Now, yes, that is a real player who plays for the Raptors, but they have no point guards. They've got none. Were they going to start Javon Freeman Liberty again? Maybe. But Kobe Simmons got like 18 minutes last game. That's like deep league desperation stuff, but he's definitely getting a boost because everyone's out and they just seem to be limiting Bruce Brown. The fact that they have nobody available and they keep Bruce Brown at 22 minutes shows what their intentions are. It shows that like with Barrett and quickly do return, the chances of them playing out the final two weeks seems pretty low because they are trying to not win. Yes, they're trying to not win. So watch those guys come back and play like 32 minutes or 28 minutes or something along those lines. Don't be shocked. The Portland, speaking of not winning, the Portland Trailblazers and the Atlanta Hawks. Um, all right. Portland, Wednesday, Friday only this week. So no weekend game. So you don't even get that pseudo quality game on Sunday. They're done after Friday. That's bad. Next week, they start off Monday, Wednesday, which is good. And then they have Friday, Sunday, whereas the Hawks have a great schedule. What the best schedule out of everybody coming up. They play on Wednesday, obviously, because we're talking about Wednesday. But then they go Thursday, Saturday. So two more quality games. And then next week, all quality games. Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. That is a huge run of being able to stream in fringe Hawks players. DeAndre Ayton is questionable. Jeremy Grant is doubtful, so he's out. Anthony Simons has already been ruled out. And I am trying to find out what I can see with um, Simons. Let's see what I know. Um, all right. So, yeah. Okay. So, I'm just I'm, I'm checking for an update on Simons, and I, I, I did get one. Um it looks like that it's still up in the air whether he returns this season. It doesn't feel like he's going to, though. That's that's the, the information that I'm getting. The, the, the wording is probably done, right? So take that for what you want about Simons, but probably done. Some knee irritation, some soreness, nothing major. Probably done is the word on it. I think the same could be said for the Ides of March, Jeremy Grant, and Aiton, I think, might be in or out here. Shaden Sharp. Still 50-50 whether he returns to play. He is trying to recondition, but it's not going to be for a couple more weeks. And Matisse Leibel, I think that his soreness will persist as well. Trey Young is remaining out. Um, I I just I don't know how to sort of view the Trey Young scenario or of when he is returning. Like it's just the updates are pretty vague on this, and I still don't fully know when that's going to be the case. Akongwu's out. Jalen Johnson's out. Griffin and Buffkin are out as well. I don't think you can hold on to a... Like, this is the tough thing, right? Their schedule's so good. It's so good that you would use a Kongwu all the way through all these days. But can you survive him not playing Wednesday and he's out? Probably not playing Thursday, maybe playing Saturday. Can you survive holding on to Jalen Johnson, who's probably out this week, even though they've got a great schedule next week, but then he maybe sits a back-to-back? There's some... Yeah, it's really hard to rely upon that. But it does open up some stuff for other guys. So what's on my radar? Delano Banton played 38 minutes last game. He puts up big numbers. Now, he can Karis Levert you at any point. So be aware of that. But I do feel he's going to get 30-plus most nights because I don't think Simons is playing. 
And Vic Krejci was good last game. Now, Vic Krejci's been starting for a while and he's been bad in basically every single game. But he was good in the last one. So the only reason I want to highlight Vic Krejci here is to pay attention because Wednesday is a high-volume day. But then you've got four, uh, six sorry, quality games coming over the next two weeks, more than any other team. So if these guys do remain out, Jalen and Yeko and all those sort of guys, and obviously Sadiq Bey is out, but Krejci might end up having... Look, if he's playing 30 a night and you get six starts out of him on the low-volume days, eh, there's at least something marginally interesting in that. Marginally. It's not great, but it's marginal. And then uh, I do want to watch Chris Murray because he's getting the boost with the minutes. He has been a poor shooter nearly every game. He occasionally gets defensive stats, but he's getting a boost at least. While Bruno Fernando, as the backup center, you'd hope to get a little bit more rebound and block out of him than he got last game, which I think he got three rebounds and zero blocks. But as a general rule, he can be streamed in, maybe not Wednesday, but some of the other days. The Clippers and the Sixers, both of these teams have the Wednesday, Friday, Sunday game. Legit, didn't they just play each other as well? What is going on? They, they're like West Coast versus East Coast, Eastern versus Western Conference, and they play each other like back-to-back? What is happening? Anyway, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday for the Clippers. Um, and then next week, they go Tuesday, Thursday, both good games, and then Friday, Sunday. Whereas the Sixers have Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, Tuesday, and then they go Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday next week. So three qualities. Now, there are still people, week 22, in this NBA season, 500 episodes into my show for the season, asking, what does he mean when it's a quality game? Isn't every game a quality game when you're in the playoffs? What I mean by a quality game is a game that is played on a day where there are nine games or fewer played, meaning that it is almost definite that you will have an open roster spot to add anyone off the waiver wire and start them. A non-quality game is a game with high volume of games on, where if you even went to add someone off the waiver wire, like on Wednesday, you probably don't have an open starting spot anyway, so it would be a waste of an ad. But I am still having to explain this, so I'll do another one now. That is the last time I explain it for this season. Shout out to next season when I do it all the time. Kelly Oubre is questionable for the Sixers. Buddy Heald is not on the injury report, while Embiid and Melton are both um, still out, obviously. So is Rob Covington. The man is never coming back, I don't think. Unfortunately for him, um, Zubats, I am very worried about where his value lies. Not enough minutes. They're going small. A lot of Westbrook in there, PJ Tucker. I, I We're getting to that stage where it's very specialty only stuff for Zubats. And then Paul Reed, I do want to watch it because I just need to figure out the minutes and I don't think I can. But 26 of Reed is clearly enough. 23 is like I'm searching for defensive stats. And then there's always the chance that you get a random Mo Bamba chucked in there. But I wouldn't think that Mo Bamba is a great matchup against a centerless Clippers lineup, but Reed is a better one. Guys getting boosted, we talked about Paul George being the number two ranked player over the last two weeks. So he is getting that little bit of an offensive boost going his way. And then Nick Batum, um, with Ubre maybe not ready to play, Batum gets an opportunity to get boosted up there. But again, we're talking desperation stuff there if you're going with Nick Batum. Indiana and Chicago. The Pacers only play Wednesday, Friday this week. Then they go Monday, Wednesday next week, which is good. And then Friday, Sunday. The Bulls have a quite bad schedule. They go Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. And then they play Monday, which is good. And then only Friday, Sunday next week. So that is terrible. There was an update right now as I'm recording this. Yeah, of course he is. Timothy John McConnell has popped up on the injury report as questionable. Aaron Neesmith is questionable after missing the last game. Alex Caruso is officially questionable. And Julian Phillips is out. Jarris Walker, last game, played like 29 minutes with Neesmith out. Will he get any minutes at all if Neesmith plays? Or will they go to Shepard? Do they still play Toppin? I was very impressed with the little bits we saw from Walker. So I want to see, like, is he in the rotation? Does it take Neesmith being out? And then for Chicago, Nikola Vucevic was pretty bad last game. I know people still think that he's good. He's not. Yes, he can still put up fantasy numbers, but this is all context dependent. It's like watching Gordon Haywood put up okay fantasy numbers in Charlotte and then disappear in Oklahoma City. It's about watching guys in bad bad players who get opportunity gifted to them and can put up numbers. And Vuce, go look at his DPM graph and how horrid it is. He is not very good at all. He is going to be so intriguing for fantasy next season, Vooch. So I've got no debate that his usage and his production has, from a fantasy perspective has been up over the second half of this season. It has very clearly. But let's see if he's able to resurrect from that garbage that he put up last game. 
Getting boosted at the moment is TJ. We hope that he's able to play. But Tory Craig started last game for the Bulls over Caruso. That's a boost, obviously. Will he start again if Caruso is out or questionable? If he's out, he definitely starts. If Caruso is questionable, do they go back to Craig? I don't think so. But there's at least a boost in Tory for those in deeper leagues. Um, today's episode is also brought to you by BetterHelp. We all need the opportunity to get something off our chest from time to time. It's just human nature, right? We have stuff that irritates us. We have stuff that builds up. Might be big, might be small. But letting it out to an unbiased person in your life, like a therapist, can be quite therapeutic, hence the name therapist. So getting that stuff out, whether you're talking about the frustration of your favorite team, like you're a Clippers fan, you go, this team, they were good. Why are they bad now? What is going on? Why have they devolved into this nonsense offense they're running? Fix it, right? You might be annoyed at that, and you might not have the outlet of talking into a podcast mic like I did just to complain about it. I'm not a Clippers fan, but I can uh, I can sympathize with your issues. So if you've been thinking about starting therapy, well, you can give BetterHelp a try because therapy is different for everybody. You, most of us have bigger problems than what is going on with the Clippers isolation offense, but some of us don't. And getting stuff off your chest can be key to helping you get through those issues that sometimes can just hold you back in life. It's entirely online, BetterHelp. It's designed to be flexible and suited to your schedule. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on NBA to get 10% off your first month. That is betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on NBA. Okay, the next game is, yeah, it's Detroit. It's Minnesota. I don't know what to make of Detroit. Well, I do know that they've got a bad schedule Wednesday, Friday. And I've, the questions have been asked, do I drop Cade Cunningham? I don't know that Cade's going to play. They've got two games, right? So even if he does play, it's only two games in the remaining six nights of the week. And there's a chance he plays one game. And if it's your finals week, you can't hold that. And you can't hold Duran either for two games. Like you just can't. Two max games. Next week, they go Monday, Wednesday. So good early schedule. Then Friday, Saturday. So they've got three qualities next week. Pretty good. The Wolves, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, as every team does. And then next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Friday, Sunday. I am preemptively listing Cade, Fontecchio, Duran, and Grimes as doubtful. I don't believe there has been an official injury report for those players yet. I'm just going to have a look. Maybe there... Ha- no, there has been, actually. There you go. There actually has been an official injury update. And, hmm, interesting. Jalen Duran has been upgraded to probable. So if we thought we were getting a handle on what Detroit was doing, well, we aren't. Fontecchio is out. Grimes is out. Gibson is out. Duran is probable. I mean, cool. And now Cunningham is questionable. Cade has missed the last two games for knee management. Him being questionable again for knee management makes me suggest that he probably doesn't play. But like I said, I think that the new NBA resting rules are going to lead to a bunch more lying on the injury report. Whereas if this was last year, they just would have said, Cade is done, he's got this knee injury, and he's sitting out the final three weeks to get it right. That's what they would have done. But the NBA, mate, you've got to make sure you play. You're going to have a lot of this lying and obfuscation that we just don't know what it means. Malachi Flynn is someone to watch. He outplayed Marcus Sasser each of the last two games. But if Cade plays, then he's completely irrelevant. Oh, yeah, also, but yeah, the Wolves, they're turning into the Lakers. Anthony Edwards and Rudy Gobert are listed on every single injury report now. They're both questionable again. Rib for Gobert, finger for Edwards. Every injury report, so I don't know whether they're playing. You could look at it and go, oh, maybe they're questionable because they're playing Detroit. They're on literally every injury report now. So I, we get, I don't know what to make of it. Um, Kyle Anderson just doing the Kyle Anderson things. We just keep watching him do the Kyle Anderson things, and I don't think that changes because that's why he's Kyle Anderson. Well, Jim Wiseman, he has been boosted, but like if Duran is actually playing, then 20 minutes of him? Well, does Duran play and play 26? Or is Monty Williams going to cry about someone hitting too many three-pointers against him? And Wiseman has to clean up the tears. I don't know. Nas Reed continues to get the boost, continues to be good. I think they'll continue to start him. Um, and him starting, obviously, is a different beast with him coming off the bench. The Oklahoma City Thunder. They are hosting the Houston Rockets. Both teams go Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. Um, the, the Thunder do come in on a back-to-back, so they play Tuesday as well. Next week, the Rockets go Tuesday, Thursday with two qualities to start the week. The Thunder go Tuesday, Wednesday with two qualities, and they both... Oh, the, sorry, the Houston goes Friday, Sunday, and Oklahoma City goes Friday, Saturday. So they've got the edge in schedule next week. At the moment, the only injuries are Cam Whitmore being out, Jabari Smith back from his suspension. We want to watch Jalen Green because the man is just hitting everything. 
Two-point percentage up, three-point percentage up, usage up, minutes up, rebounds up, assists up. Everything's through the roof. At some point, it won't be, but Jollibee Jalen's killing it. Jock Landau is getting boosted, but we want to watch what the boost is with Jabari back because he was great last game, but that doesn't mean that he has to be rostered. And then Josh Giddy continues to be a high-usage guy coming off, uh, not coming off the bench, or playing like 24 minutes a night, and they continue to give him that high-usage role. The Lakers and the Grizzlies is that next game. The Lakers are coming in on a back-to-back here as well. They play Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, along with Tuesday. And then next week, they go Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday. Three quality games in a row before playing Sunday. Whereas Memphis only has two games left this week, but one of them is on the low-volume Saturday. They play Wednesday, Saturday, heading into next week, going Monday, Wednesday, which are low-volume days, and then play Friday, and then Saturday, also a low-volume day. So a really good Memphis Grizzlies schedule coming up. But of course, we don't know who's going to play. LeBron is out for Tuesday. So I'm going to say that he's probable to play, but it might be actually closer to questionable. Anthony Davis, he's going to get a questionable tag, almost no doubt, and he possibly could sit against the Grizzlies. Vanderbilt will be out. Vincent will be out. And then we didn't have a Grizzlies injury report, but we do now. Luke Kennard is out again for personal reasons. Vince Williams is doubtful again. Vince Williams is out. Yeah, Vin, oh, sorry. John Conchar is doubtful again. Vince Williams is doubtful again. Brandon Clark is officially questionable, so it looks like he's going to return. Be prepared for pretty limited minutes. Yeah, would you stream Brandon Clark Saturday, Monday, Wednesday? You would consider it on the low-volume days if he's, in fact, back and Marcus Smart remains out. For the Grizzlies, we Scotty Pippen's the guy we look at here. I don't know whether they bring Jordan Goodwin back from the G League, but Pippen, to me, seems like the better player. So I'm okay using him, especially with Conchar and Kennard out. Guys getting boosted. This is for deeper leagues. Jackson Hayes gets that opportunity, especially if LeBron or Davis are out. But then you've got Hachimura and Dinwiddie can also get that boost. And then GG Jackson with Vince Williams out. He'll play big minutes. He'll start. He'll get a lot of shot attempts. Um, and we'll see what they do with like Bain and Jaron in this one too. The Spurs and the Jazz. Wow. What are we going to see lineup-wise here? This could be nasty. This Both teams go Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. The Spurs next week and the Jazz actually both have only three game schedules. They both play Tuesday, Friday, Sunday. Really bad schedules for these two teams. Both Victor Wembanyama and the horse Keldon Johnson are questionable. Now, Pop said that he thought Wembanyama was almost definitely going to play on Wednesday, but he's got the questionable tag. I'm guessing it's because of the opponent. And then Keldon Johnson's questionable too. Um, while Chris Dunn, it's the second game of his suspension, he's out. And I haven't seen anything to suggest that Larry Markkinen has popped up on the injury report, but don't be shocked. Don't be shocked if Lowry or Clarkson gets up on the, to that injury report. So with Wemby out, we're watching Zach Collins. He is going to, I'm guessing, put up pretty good numbers if Wemby does miss. And then on the Utah side, like Walker Kessler, because the man just can't do anything at the moment. Is there anything that Will Hardy will do to change the production of him? Or will it only be if Collins is out? I don't know. In terms of guys getting boosted, it's a nice little run from Sohan. And if either Victor or Calden are out, you're going to see more from Sohan, I would guess. And then Colin Sexton continues to get that boost with Chris Dunn out. But more importantly, if they do end up um, sitting down more Jordan Clarkson. The last game of the day is Phoenix and Denver. This is uh, an interesting game. Some of them are interesting games. This one's relatively interesting here. The news on this one, um, well, let's just talk schedule. The Suns only go Wednesday, Friday, so that's not very good. Next week, Monday, Wednesday, Good games, Friday, Sunday. And then the Nuggets go Wednesday, Friday, Sunday this week. And then Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. So only three games, but all low volume next week. Both Bradley Beal and Yusuf Nurkic are officially listed questionable. Beal sprained his finger last game. Nurkic sprained his ankle. But neither of them practiced. So I'm going to suggest they're on the doubtful side of questionable because they weren't out there practicing. So just be aware of that. If they are out, Eric Gordon, Royce O'Neal, Drew Eubanks, Bol Bol, depending on whether it's Beal or or Nurkic, it's out. Damian Lee will be out. And then the Nuggets have listed both Nikola Jokic and Maga Porter Jr. as probable. And the headmaster, Jamal Murray and Aaron Gordon as questionable with their little rest period going on here. And Zeke Nagy is out. For the Suns, it is Royce O'Neal that we want to watch because if Beal is out, and I do think that Beal will end up being out, that he will be a beneficiary, maybe Gordon, but that can be touch or go. And then Michael Porter Jr. really sucked last game. I, I Again, I, I do sympathize with him if the stress of the stuff with his brother might be, might be impacting him. That is definitely possible. So I just want to watch that. In terms of guys getting boosted, we might get a boost for Eubanks. I think Nurkic will be out and Eubanks will start. I don't think you'll get 28 minutes of bowl. I think you'll get 24 or something of Eubanks. And then you'll get a little bit of bowl coming in behind that. And both might be usable, but you're not probably going to be interested on a 12-game day. And then Reggie Jackson's probably borderline if he does indeed start, if Jamal Murray is out, which at this point, we just don't know. All right, let's talk about the schedule portion of proceedings here. 
in terms of back-to-backs, it's only one team that goes Wednesday, Thursday. It's the Atlanta Hawks. We've been talking about the Bucks and the Pelicans having a good schedule this week. Now we start to transition into the Atlanta Hawks taking over as having the best schedule in the NBA. They have the Wednesday, Thursday back-to-back, which is not great in terms of streaming someone in Wednesday, but now they go Thursday, Saturday, plus all four qualities next week is a big, big boon for them. In terms of four, the next four days, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, there are a few teams, two teams that play three games in four nights, Atlanta and Orlando. Orlando's got the Saturday game. or uh, Atlanta's got the Thursday, Saturday qualities there, but three and four. But importantly, Boston, New Orleans, and Milwaukee, they only have two games in four nights, but it's two low-volume days. There are four teams that have only one game in the next four nights. It's Dallas, Miami, Sacramento, and Toronto. So just keep an eye whether you've got open roster spots, whether you deal with those guys. It is a low-volume period. So like a stream guy, like a Keon Ellis, uh, an injured Duncan Robinson, Caleb Martin, Jaime Jaquez, uh, a Javon Freeman, Liberty, whatever, like you consider moving on from them because there is some big gaps in their um, big gaps in their production at this point or big gaps in their availability in terms of games played. If we look at the next six days, who's got four games in six nights? Atlanta, Brooklyn, Charlotte, Chicago, and Orlando. And then Boston and New Orleans don't have four games in six nights, but they do have three quality games in six nights, as well as Atlanta. Uh, Actually, Atlanta's got... No, Atlanta's got three. Three and six. And then on the two and six side, Dallas, Miami, Sacramento, Toronto. Milwaukee also only has two games in the next six nights, but they both occur on low-volume days, Tuesday and Saturday. So they're not as bad as the other two, and then you can move off of some fringe Bucks guys if you want after Saturday's action. If we look at the next eight days, there are a bunch of teams with five games in eight nights. Atlanta, Brooklyn, Charlotte, Cleveland, the Lakers, the Wolves, the Thunder, the Magic, and the Wizards. But then you've also got to pay attention to the, the uh, Celtics, the Pelicans, and the Bucks having three quality games in the next eight nights. Is it three? Or three? I think it's three. Yeah, three in the next eight nights. And then Dallas, Miami, and Sacramento only have three total games in the next eight nights. So you can get the plus two there, again, all depending on your individual schedule. I highlight the next nine days because the Hawks, again, they're really busy. Six games in nine nights. Outside of Wednesday, it's all quality game stuff from them. And then there are 15 teams that have four games in the next nine nights. So Atlanta gets that advantage over half the league. For the next 10 nights, we have got... Atlanta, Boston, Milwaukee, and the Pelicans have either four or five quality games in the next 10 nights. The reason I want to bring this up is because there are three teams, Chicago, San Antonio, and Utah, who have one quality game over the next 10 nights. That is a stark difference. It's a big difference between streaming the value of a Peyton Pritchard, Sam Hauser. Maybe it's a Vic Krejci. The Hawks are a mess with injuries, though. Bucks guys, Pelicans guys versus these fringy Blakey Wesleys, Taylor Hendrixes. Um, maybe even like a Io DeSumo, although probably not, but only one quality game for the Bulls there. If we look at um, points league streaming for Wednesday, and I just got a, an update on the Utah Jazz, actually. Yeah, you'd be shocked to know that Jordan Clarkson has now been ruled out with a different injury. Wow, not his groin this time, back soreness. The lying is unbelievable. And Larry Markin is back on the injury report as questionable. So let's just say that is as close to doubtful as you're going to get because they're playing the Spurs. They are shamelessly tanking. So those injuries just got announced right now. So there you go. Yeah, lying. It's pretty cool. This is what the frustrating part is that we all know what's going on. But the NBA has got to pretend to fake this stuff. It's just so frustrating that we just, we just can't be like, I don't know, adults about it? I don't know if that's the right word. It feels like it's sort of the right word. But it's just really like, yeah, just really annoying that we have to pretend like these things aren't happening. Like, I don't know. It's, yeah. Anyway, I'm sure you know what I mean by now. Just annoying. Just annoying. Um, but that's where we're at, isn't it? What are I going to say then? Oh, right, yeah. Yahoo point streaming for Wednesday. Corey Kispert, Scoot Henderson, James Wiseman, although I'm probably going to move Wiseman away from that now that Duran's in, allegedly. Uh, GG Jackson, Deuce McBride, and Rashawn Holmes, who is putting up some really good numbers at the moment. For ESPN, we've got Kispert, we've got Wiseman, maybe, probably push that away. Uh, McBride, Jackson Davis, if he plays, Scoot Henderson, and Rashawn Holmes. For category leagues, we stream in for the scoring categories. I am still going with Kispert and Scoot here for points and for threes. I'm going with Kispert and McBride. Corey Kispert's available in a lot of different spots. He's not ex- super exciting, but there are big opportunities for him, even though Denny and um, Kyle Kuzma are allegedly playing. For big man stats, 
I did have James Wiseman here as a rebounding guy. I, I still think he's not a bad option, but I would prefer Rashawn Holmes over him. And then for blocks, I'm going to go with Jackson Davis, again, assuming he plays, and Big John Isaac. For your guard numbers, we're going to go with Scoot Henderson and then Marcus Sasa if Kate is out. Again, very iffy. This is stuff's going to vary all the time. And then for steals, Suggsy and Juice McBride. And then for percentages, for field goal percentage, Trace Jackson Davis and Jalen Smith are two of the guys I look at there for a standard and for a shallow. And for free throws, I'm going to go with Scooty Henderson and Jordan Wara. And that does bring us, in fact, to the end of today's preview show for Wednesday's action. So don't forget, if you are here, that A, you are a legend. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. But also to hit the thumbs up and to subscribe and ring that notification bell. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.